Good afternoon, everybody in Redeemer land and uh, uh, anyone else who's watching us from elsewhere. Our afternoon devotion for today is from Romans uh, chapter 6, verses 12 to 23. It's the epistle reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost. Romans chapter 6, verses 12 to 23. Paul writes, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought through from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you are that you who are once saves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you were once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you are slaves of sin, you are freed in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you were now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. On January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation which declared that all those who, all those people who were in slavery in the rebellious states were set free and no longer slaves. And, and that was uh, of great comfort and great joy to many people in the South who were under slavery and now were set free. And this wasn't at the end of the war. This was after three years of a bloody civil war that was getting even worse. Maybe Abraham Lincoln did it to try to weaken the South, but I think knowing Abraham Lincoln and his writings, I think it was more that he wanted to set people free. And that's exactly what God wanted. God wanted to set people free. Too many people today, too many of us today, are slaves. Slaves because we submit ourselves to disobedience. We submit ourselves to sin. And because we obey sin rather than obeying God, we're becoming slaves of sin. You know, in Jesus' own words, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. But if the Son sets you free, You are free indeed. And that's exactly what God did for us. God sent Jesus into this world to give us his grace, to set us free from sin. But what are we going to submit to after we're free? Are we going to submit to God? Are we going to submit to sin? And that's what we have to decide. And Paul is leading us into what he uses the word for, sanctification. A holiness that comes from God by choosing to do what's right. 
When we choose to do what's right, we're following the sanctification God desires for us. And that's what we have to strive for. Not because that's what sets us free from sin. We've already been set free. But we don't want to submit ourselves back to sin now that we've been set free. Now we want to submit ourselves to God, the one who set us free. And so that's what we choose. And so in this time right now, the best witness, the best example we can give to our world is by doing that which is pleasing to God and setting an example for those around us not submitting ourselves to sin, but submitting ourselves to Him. Not being slaves to sin, but submitting ourselves to God and His righteousness for the furthering of His kingdom, for bringing glory to His holy name. To help others know true freedom by grace through Jesus Christ. This is our joy. This is our hope. This is our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and lead us in a true sanctification, submitting to you in obedience. Help us not to submit to sin and become slaves again to it. For by your grace you have set us free from sin and from death and from the power of the devil. And by your grace you have given us life. And so as we've been set free from those things, help us now submit to you in love and obedience because of your grace that we may serve you rather than serving sin. In Jesus' name we pray.